In our scene, we will meet a material type called the multi sub object. So let's start with a little introduction on this material type to be prepared in using this easy tool. Actually, the multi sub object isn't properly a material. Rather, it's a container that is used to organize different materials on a single object in the scene. And take, for example, the following object. It consists in a single mesh composed by multiple polygons. In Max, the polygons of a mesh are identified by a code called ID. The multi sub object uses these IDs to assign materials to specific polygons. In Edit Poly, select Polygon and selecting each polygon we see that in the material ID rollout the number is always one but we have the possibility to change it for example we can select each polygon put the number 2 in the set ID and press enter to assign the new value to the selection same thing we can do for the other two polygons setting number 3 and pressing enter now each polygon has a single ID code OK, leave Edit Poly and create a new container multi sub object in the Material Editor. This object uses the ID of each polygon to associate different materials, how indicated in the IDs of this material. Then the material I'll associate to the first slot will be loaded into the polygon 1, the material in the second slot on the polygon with ID 2, and so on. Now, I have these three materials, two kind of floors and one wall. We can associate them using multi-sub object. Then drag a material into the first slot, another one in the second, and the latest in the third one. And assigning multi-sub object to the object in the scene we will see that each material will be associated to the face with the corresponding ID. Assign now the multi sub sub object and uh, this is the result. As usual, uh, we use the UVW map to better manage the texture on the object and the game is done. Now, we can get the same result even splitting all the polygons of the object. Creating, in this way, three separate objects. So we have the floor, the floor 1, another floor, the floor 2, and the wall. We can easily understand that you get the same result by assigning individual materials to individual objects, of course. In this way, we can also apply separately UVW map modifier to each selected object. So, this little introduction is to understand that multi-sub object does not produce different results, but we can use the multi-sub object to apply different materials to a single object. In other ways, as I explained, we can separate the polygons into individual objects and apply to each one individual materials. For example, in our scene, To this object is applied a material type multi sub object like the, the one just observed. To investigate it, just select any free slot in the material editor and use the eyedropper to capture the material applied. As you can see, this is a multi sub object with different materials applied in relation to the IDs of the object. Well, this is our scene, which preserves the light balance way we already studied in the previous lesson. 
In this lesson, I, uh, this scene, I just added some new material and the result we got is this one. Now let's focus on this side of the building and start a series of operation on the texture of this wall to see how you can work on it to improve the contrast of a single texture and then how these adjustments directly improve the look of the entire image. First of all, in this kind of exteriors, we must be careful when we use walls with some dirty line like that. Make sure that they are always aligned with the edge of its geometry. So with this texture in particular, there is the, these dirty details that we must align with the top of geometry. If you want to display in the viewport more detailed textures, uh, we can do it with this option. Go to Customize, Preferences, Configure Driver, and so select uh, Match Bitmap Sites as closely as possible. Now all the texture you will load will appear in high definition. For textures already displayed, simply go to the Material Editor, select the map you want and click to Reload. In a few seconds, the map appears um, with more details and this allows us to place it more precisely. If necessary, this is a good way. The edge of the geometry is now much more realistic and visible than before. Ok, suppose that we want more contrast in these textures. We have at least three different ways that we can follow. There is Photoshop, Output Rollout and Color Correction. Let's see how we can use them one by one to work on the texture. But always keep in mind that each one of these solutions could be identical to the other in the results. For example, let's start with Photoshop. Select the texture that we are interested in and apply a negative gamma in this way. Now replace the texture and already from the previous we can see that the texture on the right is much more contrast than the left one and of course the same thing will be pretty evident in the final rendering. Assign the texture to the wall and also in the viewport you can feel that the new texture is more solid than before. And let's see what we get by comparing it uh, to the other side of the wall. And this is the first method. But let's start with the second method. We can do this type of corrections without leaving 3 dsmx So, restore the previous texture and scroll down the material editor until you reach the output rollout. Enable color map and open a preview to see what happens. Here, 
we can modify this curve bending it down and producing an effect like the previous one we got in Photoshop. Simply edit the curve in this way to get again the same contrasted result in the render. Well, even if the result looks identical, I'm not using Photoshop anymore, but just enable color map option. In fact, if I disable this option, I got the basic texture. Enabling the color map and using this type of curve, we get a stronger contrast, as shown before. And that's all about the second method. But we can choose another way, disable color map, and we can load another element in the diffuse channel, and this new element will have our texture inside. This element is called color correction and allow us to manage various options on texture. Among these options, there is a way to increase or decrease the contrast for the textures loaded inside. Go to Material Editor, click on Texture and then Bitmap, replacing the texture with the element Color Correction. 3ds Max will ask if we want to delete or keep the texture as a submap. Keep the texture and it will be loaded into the Color Correction here. In summary, in the Diffuse channel there is Color Correction element and inside the Color Correction there is the same wall texture. If we try to render, we see that nothing has changed yet. That's because the color correction element has not yet produced any effect on the texture. To increase or decrease the contrast, we go to Advanced, and in Gamma Contrast we can reduce the value to 0.5. In the preview, we'll immediately notice the difference between the value 1.0 and 0.5. It's producing a result similar to the previous ones I got with Photoshop and I got with the Output. So, finally. In order to improve the overall impact of the whole scene, we can choose to contrast some textures. Generally, this works best on the textures that have a lot of information, such as uh, such as this texture, very dark or rich of details. Concluding, we analyzed three methods: Photoshop, Output with Enable Color Map option, and Color Correction element. As you can see, all three methods produce the same result, so we can simply choose what we prefer or what is most convenient. Now, suppose we want to give a tint of color to a texture that basically has no dominant colors. Let's start with our usual wall texture, and to create a texture with this new dominant color, we can use Photoshop. Create a colored layer that overlays the text layer and change the blending mode to multiply. And this is the new texture. So we started from a texture without color, getting texture with the same details but with a different color. Save and use it in 3ds Max. Actually, we can do the same thing inside 3ds Max and V-Ray, without leaving our environment work, using two operators, V-Ray Context and V-Ray Color. Let's see how to proceed. Back in the scene and create a new material. In this case, we don't put directly our texture in the diffuse channel but into an operator, V-Ray Comp Text, that allow us to combine different textures or mix them with colors. The operator with V-Ray Comp Text includes two sources. The first one will be our texture and the second one will be a color. And finally, there is the operator to adjust the blending mode. And we will use, of course, uh, Multiply, as used in Photoshop. 
So we set starting bitmap in the source A. And in the operator B, imitating the color the layer created in Photoshop, use another V-Ray operator called V-Ray Color. And here we can set the color we want. Finally, set the blending mode to multiply as we did in Photoshop, getting the same result. This is a particularly extreme example, of course, but serves to give an idea of how you can change the color of a texture without having leave uh, our work environment. Now, return to our scene. And as exercise, complete this step 3, the step about V-Ray materials, improving the contrast of the walls that are present in this scene, using the method you want. It's very important improving the textures within this scene, uh, because improving the contrast of some specific texture, you can improve the look of the entire image. As example, let's go in the Material Editor, select our bitmap, and enabling the color map in the output, as we have seen, we can simply handle the contrast with this curve. Okay, step 3 of Villa T is now complete. In the next lesson we will see the final render and post-production.